Hey guys, Kid Guru here for the Tech World and uh, Megabyte TV as well. So today I have a webcast tutorial for you guys on downloading Windows 7 and uh, burning it or taking the ISO and actually not burning it but making it into a virtual machine. Now this is a great solution for a lot of things. One, you can virtually run two operating systems or even more all within you know one uh, just at, within Windows XP or whatever. You don't have to have to boot into them, no dual booting or anything like that. Um, and it's really cool because you can dedicate as much RAM and storage and all that stuff. And you actually don't actually have to, you know, do all this partitioning stuff and all that stuff. It's much more simpler. Um, so um, it's a great solution. And if you're just looking forward to, you know, trying out Windows 7, I, I myself am an all-around tech enthusiast. And I'm sure I have a lot of, you know, different geeks in the community who love Mac OS X, Linux, Windows, etc. Me personally, you know, I, I just, you know, I want to get my hands on OS X, but, you know, I'm saving up for a Mac and all that. But, um... Uh, if Windows 7 is free to try, I don't see any, you know, any reason why not to, and, you know, it's in beta, so, you know, why not try it out? So head over to Windows7.com, that's your first step, obviously, and then you want to go to this link right here and click download it here. It's going to take you to this TechNet page where you're going to want to read through all this because it tells you what requirements, um, some stuff like that, some recommendations for... Uh, if you're ready to upgrade or if you want to try it out, it has a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version, which you're gonna want to, you know, pick your uh, uh, version and then change your uh, language and then hit the arrow. And what's gonna do there? Um, I'm not actually gonna do this because I've already done this. It's gonna take you to a login page where you're gonna want to log in with your Live ID, and that would be any Hotmail account or Windows Live account you have. This is because it's going to need to give you a registration key, just like a product key you get when you buy an operating system so that you can register your account. And I believe the Windows 7 thing is going to be, the RC client's going to run for a while, maybe I think like another month left, and then the codes are going to expire. So, um, you know, this is a good opportunity with the last month or so you have to actually test it out before they, you know, take it out of RC and, you know, work on it a little bit more and then maybe again release it to RC, who knows. Anyway. Um, so you're going to want to try it out, and you're going to want to log into your Windows Live account, make one if you don't have one, and then it's going to give you a JavaScript installer, so you can, you know, the JavaScript installer is really fancy, it's like you can pause, resume, download, just basically, you know, it's a installer within the web browser, so install it, it's about 2 gigabytes, and then it's going to install on your desktop, and I'm going to walk you on from there, and obviously I'm not showing you all these steps because I've already done it, and you know, that way I don't have to log in and everything like that. So, with uh, some movie editing magic, we're going to jump over to the desktop. And here we are back on the desktop, and I actually have my computer open here with all my hard drives here. And I'm going to open up where I installed mine. I installed mine actually on an external drive, so I really didn't take up that much space. And this is a solution you guys can do too. Um, and here uh, we have my Windows 7 DVD ISO. Again, if you want to actually, you know, burn it, make it a whole CD and all that stuff, you can do that. You can dual boot it. Um, I'll tell you the whole steps like that in the end. I mean, I won't actually do it in detail, but I'll explain everything. So it's about 2.35 gigabyte file to be exact. And all you need is the ISO if you want to run it in a virtual machine. So you just take this ISO, put it wherever you need it, and then uh, you're going to get your virtual machine software. Um, now there's a lot of solutions. I mean, for Mac, there's Parallels, there's uh, Virtual uh, VMware, which is a really popular one. I believe it works both on Windows and Mac. But um, one favorite one of mine that's free by Sun Systems is... VirtualBox, and I'm just going to be jumping to that real quick. Okay, so we're here at the VirtualBox page at www.virtualbox.org. Um, this is a really, really cool free VirtualBox, uh, virtual machine software. And um, again, you can go here and then go to downloads and download your version. You know, it has support, like you can run Linux within it, uh, you know, win different Windows versions, a lot of stuff like that. And um, so once you install this whole virtual boxing, you're going to go ahead and open it. Okay. And here we are in virtual box. So once you install it, load it up. Here's my Windows 7 machine. I'm going to show you how to make this. It's really simple. I'm going to walk through all the process. You just want to hit new to make a new virtual machine. And um, so we're creating a new virtual machine here. You want to walk through these steps. Hit next. And you want to name it. I named mine Windows 7, obviously. Pick your operating system. And you want to pick your version. They already have Windows 7 selected right there. So all you're going to do, and then I'm going to name it Win 7 Number 2. Um, and then now here's really cool. You can select the amount of memory you want for the actual dedication to the virtual machine while you're within it. So once you click in that virtual machine, how much RAM you want to dedicate to it. Recommended is 512, and Windows 7 runs great even on like 
uh, you know, runs substantially great on 512, and, you know, runs decent enough. I ran mine, I believe, at 1 gig, um, and, you know, it all depends on how much RAM you have to spare, stuff like that. So, you can set it to however, and I'm just going to set it to, for now, I'm going to set it to uh, 532. Hit next, and then it's going to want to see how you want to create the hard disk. Now, if you want to boot a hard disk, a primary master, or use an existing hard disk, stuff like that. Now, you can cre create a boot disk. And that's what I did. And basically, all you have to do is go to create and hit next. And hit next. Now you have to have two storage types here: a dynamically expanding storage. Basically, the bigger you uh, you know add stuff to Windows 7, you know, if you download a one gigabyte file, it's going to add one gigabyte you know to the hard drive or a fixed size. And I just use a fixed size. Um, now all you have to do here is select a location. You can make one if you haven't made one. Just you know browse to whatever hard drive you want to install it on pick a name and then what it does is it creates a hard drive file where basically it's going to allocate you know however many gigabytes you uh, select so if I set mine to 10 gigabytes it would set it make a 10 gigabyte file to you know act as a hard drive for the virtual machine in this case I'm just going to put 36 megabytes and then you're finished that's all you have to do hit the finish button and your machine is all created after that um, I'm going to actually cancel all of this um, you have all your information here, and it's going to set stuff like your network, your audio uh, stuff, um, CD, DVD ROMs. It's going to have to detect all this stuff. And obviously your hard disk is going to be this .vdi file, which is the actual uh, virtual disk image file. So yeah, um, you can review all your stuff here, and you can even take get snapshots and stuff like that and have descriptions. But after that, all you want to do is hit start. It's going to start up in a little window. And you have to remember, when you actually click in the window, it's going to take you into a whole another operating system environment. So you you can't actually, you know, drag out of, you know, you actually have to leave the actual virtual machine. It's kind of confusing, I know. But um, basically, they have hotkeys where if you hit, like, control, right arrow, it will get you out of the virtual machine. And when you're in the virtual machine, you're in what they call capture mode. It explains it all in the thing. But you'd basically start it, and I'm going to do that. And here we are. So I started my machine and basically opened up in a window. And as you see here, it says starting Windows. So basically it is running the actual Windows 7 installation, and you're going to have to run through the setup, make an account, stuff like that. And it's just going to install Windows virtually in this um, little virtual machine here. So I'm going to let it start up, and I'll get right back to you. And here we are at the Windows 7 login screen. This here has my name, Adrian, and I can just type in my password. Now it would be good to go. And I mean, if I click in, as you see here, it goes into a whole, it would go into a whole VMware state. But uh, the video is actually, so here, capture. And then now I'm in the actual virtual machine, so I can't actually go out of the box. I can't click out, stuff like that. I mean, I can shut down. I can do all the stuff that you can do normally in a virtual machine and I have to get out. And you see here, we're out on the actual desktop again, so we're out of the virtual machine. But, I mean, it's really simple, guys. You can simply do that, and, you you know, it doesn't have to be Windows 7. It can be Linux. It can be anything. So, I'm just going to exit the actual machine now, and as it powers off. And it's going to ask me, do I want to power off the machine, set the shutdown signal, and I'm just going to say power off. Or you can even save the state, so basically you can save, you know, our hibernation mode, is, in other words. So that's how easy it is to actually install it in a virtual machine. You actually just have to download the ISO and that's it. There's no burning or anything required. It's really simple to set up the, pro, uh, the, part, the partition with the .vdi file. Really, really simple. I mean, again, if you want to get more technical, you can take the part, uh, ISO, burn it to a CD, uh, get a separate partition, uh, and boot up with the CD on that partition, install the operating system on that partition, and you're good to go on a dual boot. I mean... Personally, I think the VMware, it's just as powerful. You can allocate as you know much RAM as you want uh, and as much memory as you want. And it's really, really cool things. I mean, there's some a uh, few faults here and there with, you know, sometimes people have problems with audio and network adapters, but I haven't had any current issues. It works great for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'll leave all links in the video description to the right. And uh, so, yeah, I'll give you my opinions on Windows 7 coming up soon and a review. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you guys for joining me through this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the website at www.adrianstech.com. Email me any questions, concerns, video requests. Send them all over to adrianstech at gmail.com. Thanks again.